what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be the review for jeepers creepers 4 aka jeepers creepers reborn this is uh, a movie following well i guess it's I, i'll call it a soft reboot sequel to those first two entries that we got in 2001 and 2003 it's directed by timo varian sola and it follows chase and lane lane is forced to travel with her boyfriend chase to a horror festival lane begins to experience disturbing visions associated with the urban legend of the creeper as the festival arises or arrives and the blood-soaked entertainment builds to a frenzy she becomes the center of it while something unearthly has been summoned now we need to just jump right on into this what the f did they do jeepers creepers 4 is indeed going to go down as one of the worst attempts at reviving an ip it is one of the most uninspiring pieces of filmmaking i've had the pleasure of seeing this year sadly and i almost want to call up teddy long and have him call every single person involved with this and tell them that just for this movie they have to go one-on-one -on -one with the undertaker tonight this movie is hell bent on just showing you yep we can actually do worse than jeepers creepers 3 and hats off to you because you succeeded and passed with flying colors now i've talked about the movie enough on here you guys know the story the director and the cast i have never seen a entry in this series rely so heavily on green screen and i understand that this was made during the uh pandemic and everything but regardless despite that the final product is just very unconvincing due to the overuse of green screen doors are green screen a cemetery is green screen outside of a shop is green screen which then makes the characters look out of place this movie is void of any real tension suspense atmosphere it's very just not combined and having anything of what you might have gotten from those first two movies now i know you say oh you shouldn't have gone into it expecting anything like the first two movies yeah that's true but when you're making a horror movie there should be things in here that should evoke fear out of me in some capacity that's what you're trying to do anyway it's again also spearheaded by absolutely atrocious amateurish direction the creeper design is quite laughable as many of us probably expected the close-up shots don't do it any favors and it the, the design doesn't seem to even just justify its necessity of it once this film becomes a slasher more than a suspenseful creature film because the creeper he seems quite content with being skinny and bones so why not just bring jonathan breck back and try to honor that original look to some degree or yeah bring him back at some point not just stick to this skinny creeper look um there's like no real care from the creeper about anything in this movie besides lane's baby a couple worms covered in dirt and his record player that he cannot stand when you touch because he, he hates when you smash it apparently according to a sequence in the movie that is just outright terrible to see i mean seriously he the creeper shows no genuine terrifying signs of himself until the movie is near its end everything prior is giving vibes of jason michael or any other slasher sure we love those individuals but the creeper kind of stood out on its own now it feels like it's jumbled in with those characters and it it doesn't work Imran adams and sydney craven admittedly i will say they are not horrible and they do have much better chemistry than the last film's love angle sadly some horrendous pacing and a nonsensical narrative suck all of that away for the most part the dialogue is also atrocious and very just cringy to hear sometimes and the worst line i can remember is how do you like those peepers bitch and like what the wh what <laughs> the delivery wasn't all that great for some actors sometimes either and after a promising start with d wallace and gary graham again timo was just set on showing you that he will do worse than jeepers creepers 3 there is this meta aspect that is borderline insulting to the opening of screen 4 because that ron and maurice opening is just a half-baked recreation of trisha and Derry with some terrible pacing no real suspense again but you find out it's a youtube video nodding to the real life crimes that inspired the first movie the film desperately is dragging itself through the first two acts that are pretty weak lane of course has the creeper visions which are never justified similar similar to minxie giselle still reigns supreme with the visions the script is riddled with threads that do not align heck i'll even mention this chase actually witnesses lane get abducted by the creeper and then turns around to blame Stu, played by peter peter brook like why is the viewer should i take this series when chase literally just saw the creeper take his girlfriend and then moments later he confesses to this as well so why the unnecessary projection on Stu. not that Stu or any of these characters are going to warrant you giving a single care for them everyone is so underdeveloped outside of chase and lane who don't seem to really have much in common so that kind of takes away from that relationship but yeah every other character is so underdeveloped that their fates do not matter you learn nothing about them nothing to make them likable dislikable um when you can sit through a movie with it doing nothing to evoke emotion out of you besides making you laugh at how awful it is that's not a good movie there's no stalking 
There's no slow burn. Hell, even Jeepers Creepers 2, while it was confined to a bus, made that feel suspenseful. The editing decisions in this movie are very baffling, too. Jeepers Creepers 4 is honestly held back by how frequently it decided to focus on that horror hound event. The kill sequences are quick and forgettable, but we waste time with Chase and Lane wandering this event where a cult has selected them as an offering to the Creeper. More time is spent on Lane dressing up as Harley Quinn, Edward Scissorhands, and Freddy Krueger to arouse Chase. Anything related to the Creeper killing is fast food horror at its worst because it's just so underwhelming and not terrifying due to the lack of time spent to establish any sense of danger. Sure, it improves as the characters get to the house, but not by much. Jaru, I sincerely thought you were doing the best here along with Sidney Craven, but the direction is just a stain on a lot of the glimpses of potential. An authentic appeal is very important to me when it comes to expecting viewers to get lost in the fictional work, and Jeepers Creepers 4 is just highly unconvincing with its presentation overall. And we have got to stop using cults and horror reboots because this was not it, and also another absolute dumpster fire of a plot thread. I mean, you might be able to argue that the cult was more threatening than the Creeper, which is also not good. Hell, I'll do you one better because the movie goes out of its way to showcase that Chase and Stu being unafraid of the Creeper to the point that they want to throw hands with it. The difference between these people and Jack Taggart is that I can see shades of fear with Jack Taggart combined with heartbreak and revenge that eventually lets Taggart put his fear at ease. These characters don't seem to take the Creeper seriously, so why would your audience take the Creeper seriously either? I don't want this creative team back for any future entries in this series. Hang it up, call it quits, kick rocks. Somebody please call 12 before they get access to do another one because these people should be charged and booked for what I just had to watch and what I know many of you had to watch. This is not it. It seems like they're just throwing things to the wall hoping that it's stuck. There was no passion behind it. It was getting to the point where after the opening, I was like, I'd have been straight if Cindy and Brenda from Scary Movie came in and it was, this was revealed this is secretly Scary Movie 6 because it felt like a parody of itself. Lane became possessed by the creeper at the end. I'm like, wow. Again, they're just throwing stuff, hoping that it sticks. It makes the Jeepers Creepers 3 hand stuff seem not that bad. Low standards aside, if you enjoy this movie, I'm glad you did. But this is not a movie that I think a lot of us will decide to include when we rewatch Jeepers Creepers 1 and 2. It's a disgrace more than anything. And if I could rap, I would have formulated this into a diss track. I am not up for a trilogy that might dwell on possession with the Creeper. Somebody can call 12 before these folks have access to make another movie because this is awful. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and there is a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future i'm giving this a three out of ten and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video